Hey everybody, it's your boy Search Dragon, and welcome back to another edition of the Heaven's Monsters Podcast. Today we are going to cover a speedrun results of SmackDown on August 14th. Today we have Tay Money. If you smell what the lion is cooking. And let me get this expanded. Here we go. We have Chris Petrie. Sweet. And Mike Henry. Keep your rain for now, so for the Heaven's Monsters podcast, give me an L. Yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. Keep your rain for now, so the Heaven's Monsters podcast, give me an L. Yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. 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 All right. So in this speed run, we're going to get our thoughts after we get the uh, idea of what it, the hell is going on with SmackDown. First up, we have a one on one match between sing, uh, solo riding New Day member. Uh, Biggie versus one half of more John, uh, Miz and Morrison, which is Morrison, John Morrison. Due to the, what happened, the match would be thrown out as no contest because of the interruption of retribution. Because of the fact that they attacked them, everybody in the back is going nuts trying to figure out what needs to be done and who needs to be leadership. We have Biggie, we have King Corbin, we have Sheamus. All getting their thoughts on what's going on and that they, they're saying that they need a ruler or they need a group. They need a fight. And Seamus is one who says that they wouldn't even dare fight, attack him. So next up, we have, uh, oh yeah. And Big E said that he will fight against John Morrison later that night to prove that he will not be held down. So. Next up, we got a battle royale between three brands of Raw, SmackDown, and NXT in order to determine Bailey's number one contender at SummerSlam. Overall, everyone on SmackDown was eliminated, while only a few remaining members of Raw and NXT remain in form of Tiga Knox from NXT, Asuka, who made a surprise entrance since she already has Sasha Banks for the Raw Championship opportunity at SummerSlam and, and also Shayna Baszler. Tegan Knox was thrown out by Shayna Baszler and eventually despite having some outside interference we would have Asuka throw out Shayna Baszler and become number one contender for both Raw and SmackDown championship belts at SummerSlam. So, could we be looking at Asuka two belts? We have yet to... We, yep. We have yet to see that. Mm -hmm. Let me see if there's anything else. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Next up, we have Shorty G going up against Sheamus. In which case, Sheamus does away with him with the bro kick and he stands tall saying to for the security guards to have the night off knowing that he has everything covered. We would expect the Retribution to make an appearance they never did during or or after Sheamus' match. Mm -hmm. Next, we have AJ Styles with the phenomenal intercontinental strategic system. Now, that sounds professional, but then you think the lettering, that acronym, Phenomenal Intercontinental Strategics, uh, Strategies System. What does that spell? I mean, uh, P-I-S-S. -S. Everybody's screaming out, piss, 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 piss. <laughs> what the hell? And as easy, as easy, ease, uh, e egotistical, uh, I'm tongue twister here. He has a board that says who has what it takes to be worthy of a title shot with him at SummerSlam. The answer, nobody. He says he's at the top of the charts, despite plenty of people who actually have that record. Case in point, Jeff Hardy comes out, comes out peacefully. And of course, AJ Styles has to mention all this, blah, 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 about his family. It's basically Seamus all over again, but now he gets 
punches him in the face and writes his name, autographs it all over that board. And might I add, what's his name? Chris something? Chris uh, Parks. Chris Christopher Parks, a.k.a. formerly known as TNA Impact Arrest, uh, Wrestler Original Abyss, is working in WWE alongside AJ Styles. These two know each other for a long time since they're two TNA Originals. So that's pretty fun. Also, the marker was in permanent marker, so he couldn't write it off. That was funny. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, yep. uh, AJ Styles being TNA longer than, uh, than uh, Abyss. Next, we have Grand Metalik versus Shinsuke Nakamura. For the record, I want to point out that the Lucha House Party stole the titles and won the match. Grand Metalik defeated Shinsuke Nakamura and is looking very good for a potential SmackDown title match. In addition to this, we also have Mandy Rose. Okay, let's do it all together, right? Three, two, one. Mandy. Yeah, I heard you guys. So, Mandy Rose going in a full-on commando outfit, got her body tan, and has what people are calling a soccer mom haircut. Uh, that don't look like a soccer mom haircut. AJ Styles has a soccer mom ha- haircut. <laughs> they talking about they giving her name the soccer mom, the soccer mom. Got uh, greatest gift on earth. Yeah, uh, something like that. In which the case, gift on earth, soccer mom. Uh, in which case, she is so devastated. Well, not so much devastated, more pissed off at Shayna, uh, Sonya Deville, that she issued something that we thought was going to happen with Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. But that didn't happen. So we end up having it in the most, we have not seen this in a long time, and we're going to see it at SummerSlam. Because of the fact that Mandy Rose issued this challenge to uh, Sonya Deville, and she accepted it. We are going to have hair versus hair match. Whoever loses is going to get a trim. And Sonya Deville is telling Mandy she is going to be happy to make her bald. While Mandy Rose is saying that you're so confident in taking other people's hair, but you do a selfie in your own time. I wonder what you're going to look like when it's all gone. So... They have intent. Uh, excuse me, got a burp. They had intentions to make each other bald. Oh boy. Okay. The house party. Okay. They then have Alexa Bliss in a sit-down interview talking about her friendship with Nikki Cross and the fact that what. Her relationship and how she had to deal with the fiend, Bray Wyatt, and how she was asked, how do you feel about what Braun Strowman said on his comments towards you? And she started to just crack under the pressure and start to cry because of what Braun Strowman said, that he doesn't care what happens to her. And she started crying. We then have the rematch of earlier that night, Big E versus John Morrison, and Big E respectfully wins the match and is straight up telling them of the retribution, I ain't going to run. I ain't going to run. I'll be here all day. And I'm trying to see what was next. What was... Because this stop, uh kind of... Whole thing between uh, Braun Strowman and uh, yeah, but is some I'm trying to remember who was out there when uh, this guy came out because Braun Strowman made his entrance and everybody got the fuck out. I don't know what was going on, but th- damn, no, the, when he came out bald headed, I mean he's losing more and more hair. You notice that? Yeah. 
He had a full set of hair. Then he trimmed it to a mohawk looking thing, braided, and then he just trimmed it all off. Like, okay. He wants the beard, not the hair. He starts trying to talk, making a message to uh, Braun Strowman. Oh. Okay, we're back. Like I said, he was making a message talking to Braun Strowman. I mean, uh, Braun Strowman talking to The Fiend, saying what he was going to do. And Alexa, he was calling him out, telling him, come on out, Bray. The Fiend or whatever. And, and Alexa Bliss comes out trying to talk him down, trying to be his friend. And he won't even look at her. He's just talking straight at the camera. So she says, at least she's going to slap the taste out of him. And she, and she does. She keeps slapping him until the music starts to play. The lights turn out and it's The Fiend. And we thought uh, the thing was just going to pop up. He did. <laughs> but in instead, Braun Strowman disappeared and he's on the big monitor. Now he's inside Braun Stro uh, the Bray Wyatt's head and they're both laughing maniacally. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? And I think that's it as far as that's concerned. I'm trying to see. Was it anything else? No, 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 no. No. Okay, did I miss anything, Chris? Uh, you uh, you missed uh, what the Bronx Strowman press him and press slam Alessa Bliss. Oh yeah, she he laid his hands on her. He had her all up uh, over his head for a good while. Anything else? Yeah, the retribution attack. Uh, the referees. Yep, that you see, it didn't cover that. Yep, while during Big E's match, Retribution kind of showed up, and they were all out there. E almost every wrestler was out there ready to take on Retribution, but they attacked so many officials and announcers and rookie uh, wrestling stars in the back during in catering that it was it's just, just, we saw it, how it happened. We was just like, Damn! And the referee came and pulled him out and said, they're in the back, they're in the back. Leaving Biggie and John Morrison left alone, but they didn't attack him after that. Anything else? And, and Kalisto is back. Oh, yeah, during the match. Oh, you have to go? Yes. Leaving the podcast, like I said, we didn't have enough time. That's why I said we're doing a speed run. Okay, so before you leave, uh, what do you take from all of this? Take two things. Sad part, I didn't like seeing Les, having a less bliss, but man, that was crazy. And Jeff Hardy deserves an incarnate title shot. That's all I got to say. Okay, then, bro. Later. Later. Let's go. Yeah, I'll clean it up. I don't do this anymore. All right, was there anything else uh, that was not on the review, Chris? Uh, no, there's three things. The Kalisa came back, Russia Butcher and the tag. And uh, Alexa Bliss get blessed sound by uh, Braun Strowman. Yeah, let me get back to that. During the fact that um, Cesaro was actually trying to take on Lince Dorado, but then we would hear the music of Lucha House Party once again, and it would be the return of Kalisto looking badass as ever and it, it he takes care of Cesaro given the opportunity for Grand Metalik to pin Shinsuke Nakamura. So Lucha House Party is back in full power. Alright. So let's run it down. Chris, how do you feel about the hair versus hair match between Mandy and DeVille? Mm. That would be great. Which one of these women could be Bob Sonia Deville or Mandy? Mikey? <laughs> well, I tell you, it was a Pacino, right? How do you feel about the hair versus hair match between Mandy Rose and Sonia Deville? Well, I can't wait to see Mandy Rose get payback because Mandy Rose. She's no longer God's great creation. She's God's greatest soccer mom. 
Mm. In which case, what's the next thing? How do you feel about Retribution attacking everybody in the back that wasn't even a wrestler? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. These, they, they got stopped. Retribution has gone way too far. Retribution, you... Oh, man. What the fuck? You, Chris? Retribution is going oh, way over the line. I mean, I don't know what they're trying to prove, but you have to stop. You're going to have to stop. Yeah, it kind of feels like the Nexus, but more unhinged. That's what it feels like. Next up, let's talk about the fact that Asuka is now number one contender for both titles and the possibility of her being both Bailey and Sasha Banks is a undeniable possibility. I mean, we're saying that it may not happen, but it can if everything goes well for Asuka. But we both know Bailey and Sasha Banks work too damn well together, so that is a problem. So what do you feel about Asuka's possibilities? Mikey? I just hope Asuka ties Becky's way as two belts. The first got Becky the two belts last year, and now this year, it could be Oscar because she can't wait to get her hands on two women that foot kind of saying it's for five years. Mm-hmm. You, Chris? I want I want Oscar to win two belts, then she can she can be next to Becky Lynch, who won those two belts from Charlotte Flair and won the last won the on WrestleMania last year. Okay. Now let's go on with the possibility of Jeff Hardy getting a number one contender sh title match against AJ Styles. And how do you feel about the formerly per uh, person known as Abyss on TNA working with AJ Styles? Another former NXT uh, uh, TNA original. Go ahead, Chris. I know you want your two cents. AJ Styles and Christopher Park. You ain't Joseph Park anymore? He's going by Chris, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have history as opponents in TNA back in 2003. They they uh, they fought they fought it out. They were they was in a war and a steel cage match. Six sided steel cage match, really. And and they they and for the championships back back in DNA. And now Christopher Park and AJ Styles. Yeah, Christopher Park is a manager of AJ Styles? Maybe. They haven't really talked about that. Yeah. Well, that would be that would be something to to TNA or original rifle. Keep it up. Yeah, buddy. You Mikey? How do you feel about Jeff Hardy getting a title shot? Ooh, give Jeff Hardy a title shot. Love to see him for AJ Styles this coming fight because I thought it's going to be Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles at some point, but no. WWE decided to make it this coming Friday night SmackDown, so let's see what happens this coming Friday night. Yeah, buddy. So, I want to take that and actually point out the flaws in AJ Styles. He puts himself on high on the pedestal, but he doesn't mention everybody else's credibility, good or bad. One is the fact of Braun Strowman having the highest ranking title right now, television-wise. And that's Braun Strowman, Universal Champion. Then we have The Fiend, Bray Wyatt, 
who brought that title from Raw to SmackDown after beating Seth Rollins at Crown Jewel. Then you got the fact that we have multiple contenders of heels, say Cesaro, winner of the Bat uh, Battle Royale Andre Memorial at WrestleMania, the first one. You got Sheamus, Royal Rumble winner, former WWE champion, as well as the fact of a former key in the ring. And Money in the Bank winner. Then you got, again, with uh, King Corbin, former Money in the Bank winner, former uh, King in the uh, current King in the ring. So, and then you got Jeff Hardy. I mean, no matter how you look at it, he's putting himself high in the pedestal and not even acknowledging everybody else's things. Technically, if I remember correctly, and Chris, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. AJ Styles first premiered in a Royal Rumble, but did not win it. And he has not won a Royal Rumble. Yes or no? No. He did not win a Royal Rumble match. So you have Jeff Hardy, Braun Strowman, one of the biggest ones, for that matter. As well as Sheamus getting that victory that he hasn't done at a Royal Rumble. So what the hell? So that's just my two cents on that. AJ Styles talking about all that crap. Then you got Daniel Bryan, but he's already beaten Daniel Bryan. He's looking for more, uh, different competitors. D Daniel Bryan's got a record. He, he good. So what's next? What can we talk about? We talk about Retribution, Oscar, the Intercontinental, Braun Strowman. Yeah, we talked about Braun Strowman. Is there anything you want to talk about Braun Strowman we haven't talked about? And uh, Alexa Bliss as well as The Fiend? Go ahead, Chris. Well, I always said that uh, Braun Strowman press I am. Alexa Bliss, because it's not the same Braun Strowman we know. He's just listening right there. Braun, Braun Strowman. You, Mikey? I'm telling you right now, Bray Wyatt has gone way too far, and I mean way too far, trying to make Braun like a living hell. Sorry, Chris. I saw you actually trying to say something else. Go ahead. That's a good question. So, nothing to point out on Big E except for the fact that he tried to lead the charge and it didn't go so well. Nothing to com comment either on Sheamus' match with uh, Sorty G. Oh, that's what I forgot. Hello. I, I knew I was going down the list thinking Sorty G. That was not on the message either. When Sorty G was talking with Matt Riddle in the back during his interview, he was trying to apologize for it. And from behind, we thought it was an ambush of, of false claims of apology, and King Corbin would jump him. But Shorty G didn't run. Shorty D didn't snicker. He was actually staying there, standing there, confused and not trying to run or hide. He was actually concerned about Matt Riddle's safe, uh, wellness, meaning he didn't play any part in uh, King Corbin. King Corbin just said that to twist the scene. So chances are... If Matt Riddle doesn't take what happened uh, to Shorty G's not running away, well, he might, we might have a one-on-one -on -one match between Shorty G and Matt Riddle next week. Or King Corbin. Take your pick. How do you feel about that, Chris? I think it will be a uh, King Corbin versus uh, Matt Riddle next week. Well, next week, Matt Will will get his revenge on King Corman, but killing him from behind with a scepter. Your scepter. You right. You, Mikey? Unbelievable. Where the hell did King Corman come from? Around the corner. 
jackass. Indeed. A royal jackass. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you, you find that funny, huh, Chris? Yeah. Royal jackass. Royal jackass. Royal Burger King jackass. <laughs> He ain't got no beard, let alone hair. If you if you want to get down to it, he's like a fusion of uh, Jack in a Box and Burger King. He's got the whole king robe, but he's bald. Pale as hell. So I'm trying to think, was there anything else we can comment on? We already talked about Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. I guess that's pretty much nothing really to talk about. We always said uh, congratulations for Kalisto making his return. Did you say anything about that, Mikey? No, I did, but I just want to I'm glad that Kalisto's back with his Lucha House Party. Lucha, Lucha, Lucha. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Kalisa would go to Raw and help Rey Mysterio and son Dominic and abuse. Good in, uh, insight. Good insight, Chris. That could have been a possibility, but the fact that he's... I don't think they were doing that, though. That's sad. Plus, I think it's better for Kalisto because he might be a contender... For the Intercontinental Championship, seeing as that he's a former Cruiserweight and United States Champion, he just has never became the Cruiserweight Champion. Is that correct? Kalisto, I'm talking no. about. Yeah, no, he never. Uh, I think he did. One time he was a Cruiserweight Champion, one time. The Intercontinental Champion? No, not the Intercontinental Champion. That's what I was saying. Not the, it's the United States and. So that's it. Mm. So this could be another opportunity for Kalisto to become a new another champion that he's not acquired. Because as far as anyone else is concerned, uh, Lince Dorado and Grand Metalik are going after the tag team champions. So that leaves the question: Will they work like New Day and share the titles with Kalisto and mix around their tag team chip? Or will Kalisto go solo with his buddies but watching his back against AJ Styles or whomever has the title afterwards? That will look good. Anything else you want to comment, boys? No, that's it. I think that's it. All right, let's end this. A shout out to our fellow brethren of the Heavens Monsters podcast. A shout out to Xavier Hill, Mike Henry, and Andre Mitchell. A link to the, your, to their YouTube channels will be in the descriptions down below, as always. And a remaining shout out to Chris Petrie, T Money, who just left, Renee, Farrell, and Delvin. You ready to end this, boys? Let me put my face. You like this video? Give it a thumbs up. What? What? Oh, yeah. Two matches for 205 left. Thank you. Thank you. So, we would have a uh, tag team match between Ever Rise and Lince, uh, Raul Mendoza and Draken Wild. I want to say this for the record, guys. These two, the Ever Rise, would have a winning streak with a bunch of rookies for quite some time after they claimed that the 205 Live brand is their show. And then these guys come around and they lose to the two guys running with the Cruiserweight Champion, San, Santos Escobar. Your thoughts, Chris? Talk about two or five lives. You ain't got no comment? No walks to words. <laughs> what about you, Mikey? Lots of words. Lots of words. Mm. Well, 
if I'm remembering correctly, uh, what was his name? J Jake? J uh, Jack Atlas. Jake, Jack, Jake Atlas. There you go. He goes up against the returning Arya Davari, and honestly, Arya Davari was po uh, pulling some stunts before finally getting the win over Jake Atlas. So, making his return as good as he is right now, he's definitely got a winning streak going on his return. So, what are your thoughts on that, Chris? Too bad for Jake Atlas. He, he, he hanged in there trying to win, but our little body got the drop on You, Mikey? Tough one. Anything else to comment, boys? I believe that should be it. In late. All right, then. You ready to end it? Let's do this. So, with that said, folks, you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You didn't, give it a thumbs down. Hit that subscribe button, like the content. Hit that notification bell for the next Heaven's Monsters podcast. <clears throat> Mikey, let him know what's up. And that's the bottom line, because that's what's the podcast you said, so. I'm Serge. This is Mikey. That was Terrence. This is Chris Petrie. Tell him what's up, Chris. And that is too sweet. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Good night.